It's fair to say winter golf it presents us with quite a few problems and hitting off of mats well that's certainly one of them but then of course we've got to stay warm we've got to keep ourselves dry that's before we even think about hitting a golf shot now as a matter of interest that was an eight iron I played 115 into a little par three that's an interesting point that we'll pick up on later and that's not to mention trying to find your ball underneath all those freaking leaves Ah, that would have been a nice birdie to start the morning so when you've got yourself dry you've got yourself warm you've found your golf ball there's then one other big question and that is what are the best golf clubs to have in your bag for all the adverse conditions we're likely to face in winter golf kick on a bit that's not too bad and that again was an eight iron from 130 yards with a totally different ball flight and that again will be really relevant when we discuss something very very shortly those adverse conditions i refer to can often be thought of as well the wind and the rain and all those things that are associated with weather conditions but what impact does it have on the ground that we play from from the rough that we play from and do we need to adjust our bag setup and the clubs we carry to accommodate for those changes in the winter conditions my answer would be damn right we do and in today's video i'm going to show you how my bag has changed significantly and what i'm going to be carrying this winter to uh, well hopefully allow me to get the better of those conditions now although i drive around in a buggy at carden park to do this filming i do actually like to carry my bag during those winter months still if i'm playing some social golf so the first thing i need to do is lose some clubs and lose some weight and when I say lose weight, I do mean from the bag, not from the belly. I'll also explain a couple of other items that I carry in my bag to make life a little bit more comfortable during the winter months. And uh, my bag setup itself, well, I think there might be a few surprises in there. Roll out. Roll out. Not bad. So therefore my bag setup is very much minimalistic this time of year and the choice of clubs are very much what I consider to be the essential ones. So that of course means I've got to have a putter which is the Lab Golf Mez 1. And obviously a driver. And that driver has been the tailor-made stealth in fact i've gamed this thing all year which as you know i to uh, dip in and out of drivers and odd that this has managed to stand the test of time so nothing very interesting so far but where we move to next well things get a little bit different in terms of my normal bag setup let's say now that's an eight iron from 110 yards that's a pretty damn good one as well the question is why am i telling you the distances that i keep hitting with my eight iron let me explain you see the thing is i only carry three irons from my regular set during the winter yet yeah, just three and they are pitching wedge eight iron and six iron and what that means is i'm going to have to cover multiple yardages with each of those clubs so i'm going to have to learn to do certain things with those irons which i think is key to getting better at the game in general so how am i getting by with just those three irons well there's a little bit of a caveat to that and it'll come very very shortly but essentially what you need to do in my opinion is learn to be able to flight the ball a little bit differently Learn to be able to play half a swing, three quarters of a swing with each of those clubs. And very soon you can cover a number of yardages. If we go back to the two shots in particular from the first two, one was downhill playing 110, where we popped the ball up very high with a three quarter swing. And then the second shot we played was uphill. We had further distance to cover. We were able to flight it down lower and carry a longer yardage. And I think that is really key, not about your winter golf bag but being able to understand what you're doing with the club head is really key to becoming a better golfer in the longer term so not only do i limit this in terms of being able to carry the bag a lighter weight i also really enjoy trying to at least attempt to execute those different types of shots and obviously that applies with the wedge the eight iron and the six iron 
So what do I do when it gets a bit longer in the bag? Well, the answer is I reach for one of my favorite clubs of the year, which is from TaylorMade. It's the DHY. I've featured it on so many occasions. I've regularly carried the five iron equivalent through the summer, but I've now introduced the Ford DHY into the bag, which is, as I recall, 22 degrees aloft. Yes, that's correct. Thought I'd confirm that. And it is a great club to have in at this time of year. I can do pretty much what I've said in terms of the other irons, and that's play them at different, or play it rather, at different yardages. But it's all about being a more powerful ball flight. Still got the carry distance, and one that I am really comfortable with and that's just off this tight par four the perfect kind of club to reach for plenty of carry i absolutely love these things all right so that's half a six i made three quarter six iron playing 140 up the hill nice and controlled my regular full-on six iron maybe goes up to 175 with a full swing we just played it at 140 up the hill. It's plenty doable, you know. And when I say plenty doable, the fact that I often perform better when I'm hitting three quarter shots than I do playing irons at my full tilt. So generally speaking, the way we play golf is like we say, okay, so how far do we hit our six iron? We'll hit it 170. Okay, so that's the club I'm gonna to grab to hit 170. That's 170 full tilt. Okay, so what about if we were playing 150, but we're playing three quarter swing like we've just done? We've got much more control. We're sort of relying on rhythm and tempo. And often, like I said, the results are better than trying to hit at full tilt, which is what we generally base our yardages on. Do you want this to be a nice birdie, four iron, three quarter, six iron? This pin or this green can be really tough though. Let's see if the mez is working this morning. Nah, nowhere near firm enough. So much uphill. So now Mez, just centre and firm. Okay, he did that bit at least. Right, what's next? Right, so we're going from four driving iron. Where do we go to next? Well, I'm gonna go first of all for my next club down from driver, which might surprise a few of you. Now, apart from that ball going down the left-hand side, which is a tendency of mine right now on this hole, you'll see a really strong, powerful ball flight, a ball that's traveled quite a number of yards, and the perfect club for me next down from my driver is in fact a five wood. It's the Stealth five wood, and again, it's a club that I've played pretty much all year in the bag, and it'll stay in my winter collection. And that's simply because of the way the ball flights itself, just how powerful it is off the tee. It defies its loft a little bit. So I can hear you saying what's really strange about having that club in the bag. Well, nothing until I reveal the other club I carry alongside it. And that's because the next club I'm about to reveal is exactly the same loft as the five wood, 18 degrees, but they're very, very different. The fact I was left off the tee might work perfect to demonstrate the versatility of this next club because like I said, it is exactly the same loft at 18 degrees. The number on this thing is three as opposed to five and yet this thing goes shorter distance than the five would. So just to get that perspective, I'm going 22 degree, four DHY, three, 18 degree, and then five, 18 degree, and then driver. This club is of course the high wood and it does things very, very differently than a lot of clubs. And it certainly does things different than that of the five wood. And hopefully with this shot, if the camera hadn't blown over, I can attempt to demonstrate. Right, take two, come on. Let the high wood work its magic. Kick round a bit, kick round a bit. Here she comes. 
Well, we're on the green in two, that's a par five, anybody that's interested. The first thing that this thing does incredibly well with this railed sole unit is get your ball out of the rough. It's a wet morning here, and as you can see, it picks the ball up extremely well and still manages to get it airborne. If I was to play this thing off the tee, the ball fight and launch angle is considerably different than that of the five wood. So I like having the versatility of these two clubs in the bag. They each do different things. My five wood is all about a penetrating ball flight, a lower ball flight. It's all about distance. This thing is more about versatility. I prefer to play it from the rough. It acts like a hybrid when it comes to the rough. And if I want to play it from the tee, then it's all about popping the ball up high. It's just such a versatile club to have in the bag. And don't forget, in the winter, this is all about. This thing carries, it gets out of wet rough. I can play it from soggy fairways. It's an absolute no brainer to add to that top end of the bag. Right, that's the top end of the bag finished. We better get down that short end. So as ever, it's now over to you guys because what I'd be interested to know is how is your bag shaping up and how many changes have you made so far in preparation for this upcoming winter. So I've got a wedge in the bag and I like to manipulate the club face a little but not so much so that if you're faced with this kind of thing which is still a steep face bunker and not all bunkers are GUR in the winter unfortunately so we're going to need some loft and I'm going to go to the extreme in terms of I like to carry a 60 degree wedge. I like, I'm, I say I like, I love this uh, Callaway Jaws wedge this shaping around this bottom of this 60 degree wedge what they've done makes it extremely versatile and you're gonna like i said in the winter have this type of shot to cope with and like i said from my perspective i like to have as much loft as possible but it's the way i play the shots i suppose sit down now that's not too bad at all but again that sort of bounce on the sole helped me it's quite a bit firmer than i expected it to be underneath I certainly feel the way the shape of this club is on the bottom of it did me a favour. That wide sole helped me out. And you're going to find some other awkward situations where you're going to need to be able to pop that ball up and help you get out of some sticky situations you might leave yourself in. But then we need something else in the bag. So I then need a versatile wedge that I can put in the bag, if we're going to call it that, that I can play well from a number of different scenarios from in and around the golf course. Go in. Oh, nearly. That is, of course, my trusty Ping Chipper. And in these winter months, I think the Ping Chipper is even more beneficial to most average golfers in terms of what it can achieve and its versatility. I've just played two different shots. One was a very much a straightforward chip and run. This other one was just able to open the club face up a little bit. Yes, open the club face up of a chipper and just get that to pop up a little bit higher. But it's still that chip and run shot, which is crucial. If you're playing a chip shot and looking to carry all the way, then you've got to be very accurate in terms of your distance because your ball is going to pitch and stop in these wet conditions. That chip and run, that lower flighted ball is always going to have a better chance of getting near the hole and the ping chipper, but it does it so, so well. But now I'm finding I can do it a few different ways in terms of adding a little bit of loft and also playing some longer shots with it. Now, before I finish the video, I want to talk about this thing. That glove is an absolute essential for pretty much all year round golf. And I've done a video on a golf glove. Yes, I reviewed a golf glove, but this is special or that material at least is anyway. This glove is from Smart Tech and trust me, in terms of wet weather performance, it is incredible. But then you've got Cabretta leather on the backside of it. So if it's daylight today, you get all the performance benefits of a standard leather glove. If the rain starts to come down, which is quite possible looking at that grey sky, then we've still got plenty of grip and this thing performs incredibly well. So if you want to complete your bag, make sure you've got a smart tech glove in there. So that is my winter golf bag complete. If you count back, you'll find there's only 10 clubs that I've put together, which I think is more than enough for me to carry around in terms of weight wise and just enough in there in terms of performance wise to cover any yardages. Now, many of you, may want to throw a few more in and make sure you've got every base covered but i love the idea of taking that lesser amount of irons in particular and trying at least to attempt to do different things than i normally would now, this is not an ideal hole to decide to finish the video on because generally it ends in tears but i'm playing quite well at the minute 
And that's a great way to finish. It's a five wood, by the way. The ball, ball flight was exactly as I explained earlier and definitely why it's one of my must haves in my winter golf bag. Right, as ever, let me know what you think of today's video. I'm sure you will anyway. And let me know how your winter golf bag is coming along. And are you still managing to get out there? Because I know a few of you, unfortunately, are wintered off. Not sure that's a phrase. See you later.